Here is an onion. Onions peel in layers. This onion represents the whole of security with the six layers of cybersecurity. That was a dumb intro. Sounds pretty good. All right, cybersecurity. It's a vast, complex field. There can be a lot of information, concepts, and tools to understand. And sometimes it's good to take a look back and take a look at the layers of security. Breaking into cybersecurity is a layered approach. It not only helps you with understanding security, but also the implementation pieces, such as where perhaps you lack visibility, detection, and processes. So let's peel back the layers of complexity. Duh. See what I did there? Oh, God. And let's investigate the world of the six layers of cybersecurity, starting with perhaps one of the most overlooked layers, which is the physical layer. Security is not just technical, it meshes with the physical layer of in real life. So holding the door for somebody while they enter your corporate business, scanning QR codes, or peering over while you work at a cafe. These are physical threats that can certainly happen, steal sensitive information, gather initial access into your data center, or impersonate a user. And the physical layer of protecting against this can be both easy, but also complex. So to prevent this from happening, you have to think about a layered approach within security. From a defense perspective, you have a layer inside a layer. You have to think about the layered approach for physical security. So general user education or RFID cards to restrict access, uh, screen protectors, FIDO2 security keys. The limitation of layer one is physical. So physical threats, yeah, they're not going to be as prevalent, but they certainly can be very effective. Now, if you're a cyber criminal across the country, probably can't lay exercise layer one TTPs, but you maybe could hire somebody. I don't know. Layer two, perimeter security. So similar to a castle and a moat, layer two serves as a general gatekeeper. So the core of this layer is really about filtering out the noise. Implementing concepts and tools such as network-based firewalls, maybe intrusion prevention, detection systems, VPNs, these create barriers between your secure network and perhaps the untrusted network being the wild west of internet. Now, perimeter security can only take you so far, and there certainly can be weaknesses in this kind of trust-based model. We've seen a lot of attacks bypass traditional security defenses by impersonation, living off the land, using legitimate protocols. And, and so in general, perimeter security is a great first line of defense to filter out that noise. But outside of that, you have to start thinking more in layers. Now, strategies such as defense in depth, zero trust, these have come into play over the last decade, which take a deeper look into the identity portion of security. So the who and the what. Layer three, network security. So network security takes a deeper look into that trusted network. Once users have gained access into that network, they shouldn't just be able to freely roam without any restrictions in place. Network security applies to network level control and prevention of users, devices, and communications. So the key here should be access management. You know, who gets access to what, and, and perhaps this is where IAM, Identity Access Management, comes into play. The focus here should be securing your network infrastructure in a way that's accountable and repeatable. So network level data protection, such as, of course, an, an encryption, network layer visibility, such as verbose logging, that's gonna be very important. You wanna understand what's going on in your network and place restrictions in that network. Layer four, endpoint security. So. Endpoint security looks to protect the devices such as laptops, workstations, mobile devices, IoT, existing inside or perhaps outside of your network. Each of these devices, of course, is a potential entry point for an attacker. Traditional antivirus software was often the implementation of this layer, I mean, maybe before I was even born. <laughs> but now when we look at this more closely, we have a lot of, I guess you could say buzzword bingo of uh, various different endpoint detection level devices like EDR, XDR, endpoint protection platform. All of these really, the core tenet of these is to create an environment where you monitor, collect that data, and respond to threats in both a signature and heuristic based model. Endpoint security cannot just be a tool though, and often that's a misconception. You have to think about the policies, the patch upgrades, the vulnerability management, and the applications that are allowed to ins be installed on these devices. So once again, layered inside of layers. Layer five is applications and programs. So the programs are of course the center of what we interface with every day. Anything from you know the weather app to your traditional Adobe Acrobat. Application security looks at the development process and software lifecycle. Um, so the so-called, again, buzzword, shifting left to application development basically empowers developers to you know use say memory safe languages such as Rust, catch bugs early and perhaps deploy often. 
Now, application security looks at this, and it also has to take into account the patching. So there's going to be vulnerabilities and bugs in your systems. So how are you going to implement a patch cadence? How are you going to gather all of the vulnerabilities and aggregate them? Um, and oftentimes, how are you going to prioritize those patches when you have millions of devices you're looking after? You also have to consider the software supply chain. So concepts such as software bill of materials or software composition analysis, which basically are ways of looking at what the application is actually developed with. These are quite important as well because you have to think about areas where developers could insert maybe vulnerable code into a third-party open source library and, well, pwn you. So application security, is, it's very actually wide and complex, and we see a lot of need in this area. Layer six being users and data. So application, network, endpoint, I mean, they all generate data. And here we have to think about the data in general and what data is most important to us as IT and IT security. So analyzing this data generation, data formatting, such as you know your standard JSON or Parquet or CSV, data logging, normalization of that data, and enrichment of how you can perhaps add context in that data, that's all gonna be important in this layer. Security tools generate a lot of noise, a lot of data, and this translates into a lot of alert fatigue and perhaps just not knowing where to look. So the data here is looking at what those users are doing inside your network, outside your network, and how you can monitor that. So layered security, onions. All right, so hopefully this video has been informative, dumb intros aside. Sometimes it is good to take a look at the whole of security, understand the different types of attacks and their associated defenses and also just the careers that come into play. I mean, all of these layers have very viable career paths. So you have to think about maybe perhaps what layer you want to be on um, because there's a lot of need in all of them. And security, it's a layered approach. So with that being said, have a good day. Well, you know what it is. Have a good day. And here's an onion.